I'm doing something a little bit different today in that I'm taking a question from a user. Usually we get this question a lot on the mailing list and I've been asked it before too um, about FontForge's me metrics. There seems to be a lot of just not really confusion, but definitely it's not done in a user-friendly way. So I can see where the confusion comes from. So Dimas B. Nirwandani asks, Hi Fred, can you tell me how to change the size of the ascender, cap height, x height, and descender in FontForge? And how I can show lines for all of those. So, first what I would say is that even though a cap height and an x height are actually important to typography and design, they really are not that important as far as the standards go, like as far as the font standards themselves go. The cap height and the x height in particular um, are not found in the postscript tables. So, because they're not really needed, if you think about it, once you have the ascender and the descender, and if you know where the baseline is, uh, you can correctly draw the font on the screen. And the cap height and the x height are not really... They don't really need to be part of the format. They're definitely important while you're working on a font, but they're not really part of the format. So, they aren't shown in FontForge uh, by default. And where they are needed for the OS slash 2 table, which is... Um, it's still used, sort of, but it's not really used to what it was originally made for. Um, Windows in, is really the only operating system that still really needs it, and still really needs it to be in a good working order. Um, here, in this table, they're actually just automatically generated by FontForge because it knows it needs to put something there in order to create the table. So you don't really have to worry too much about what FontForge thinks your cap height and your x height are. And it, it, they just come from, as FontForge says, the height of the capital X and the height of the lowercase x. But I opened up this font of mine called uh, KJV1611 to show the problem with that, right? So, this font has lowercase letters that are all different sizes. Uh, for example, we can see the letter Z, it has a point which goes up to 640. Um, the letter S goes up to 720. Or, wait. Oh, 703, sorry. So, it's, it, it's just automatically generated. Uh, here is the source file for KJV1611, and you can see that I actually have multiple different X heights defined. One is the height of the letter A, and then the other is just the regular X height, which is used for most other letters. Um, yeah, uh, for example, like the letter X, or at least it's it's something close to that. I would recommend that instead of worrying about what FontForge thinks your X height is, you just define it yourself. And you can do that by just clicking on the ruler and dragging down and giving that, you know, a name. No problem there. Um, as far as I know, there is no way to show what FontForge thinks the X height and the cap height are on the screen. Uh, but it it doesn't really matter. It's just the maximum height of the big letter X and the small letter X, but really it would be better for you to define them yourself and not worry about what FontForge thinks these two values are, unless you have a very good reason to worry about it. Uh, one other thing that I'll touch on, because this is another question we often get regarding metrics, is how to change the ascent and the descent. So. Dimas also asked this. So the first thing you need to do is uncheck scale outlines. And that's something people often miss. 
if you, for example, want to make uh, your font have more room in between lines, uh, we can show real quick what this font looks like by going to print. See how it's very compact. The lines are very close to one another. We can fix that. Well, not that it's a problem. It's correct for this typeface, but if we don't like that, we can easily just increase the ascender and the descender. So let's do that. Um, we'll increase both of them by 200 here. So we'll make this one 1,028 and then 372. So now we can see that all the letters have just gotten a lot smaller. We can see that the descender is now a lot farther down and the top line here, which is the ascender is now way above where it was before while well, before it was pretty much right on the cap height and if we go to print now we can see that there's much more space in between in between these lines now one thing you might notice is when you're going to generate your fonts now you will get a warning um, about the M size, because our M size is now non-standard. It's 1400. Uh, by convention, the M size, it should be either 1000 or 1024 or 2048. Depends on what you're doing, but, or, and what, you know, system you're trying to please. Um, most computers have no problem with a non-standard M size, but it should be 1000. So after you after you fix these, right? And you have your uh you have your ascender and your descender line where you want them. You're going to want to um you might want to at least to suppress that warning is to put 1000 or like I said 1024 2048 and keep scale outlines checked and then press OK. And now it will be back to um, multiples of 1,000 and you won't get that warning. Uh, yep, that's, that's, I hope I answered everything and if you have another question, you know, you can feel free to ask it. Uh, even if I've got it a bunch of times before, you know, I will make a video about it and then I'll just send that video out to people whenever I get it again. So thank you, Mr. Nirwandani, for your question, and uh, happy font founding. Okay, thank you.